Thank you all for coming to the talk. I, just a heads up, Arndt isn't here, so if you're in the wrong room, <laughs> yeah, it's a cute to walk out. Yes. So. Yeah, so this is an overview of the talk. Like, we'll go about the background of what we're solving and what are the different classes of problems that we try to solve, and a brief update about where we are today. Um, a little bit about me. This is important because this will tell you how I posted my patches, and like, you'll see. <laughs> and this, like, I used to work at Qualcomm, like until 2015, and then I got really bored of the politics of it, so I just quit. And then I got more bored because I was not doing anything hard, so <laughs> I went back to Outreachy, and from then uh, I was working, and then somebody else said, oh, why don't you join Google? And then just, I work at Google now. But I still work on the 2038 problem. And so this is why the background was important, because yeah, usually for the outreachy period, people try to submit many patches so that um, based on the patches, like the mentors actually select applicants for the problems and I only submitted three. That's odd. And again, like during the outreachy period itself, it was like I only, it's a three month internship and it's usually meant for college students, like people who are not working. But yeah, again, I only did two patches, and after outreach, I did 12, and after joining Google, it was 80. But it's, it looks like I'm, a, I'm kind of a slacker, but <laughs> I'm probably not. <laughs> it's like, I posted like four, yeah, it's like around 500 patches. And so you see like, uh, so every, most, of this, uh, most of these patches were not just like revisions with minor updates. They were like complete rewrites. So, but there are a few which are just like, oh, okay, minor updates and things like that. But, so it, it took a while to get here. And so the background of the problem is that, um, so time t is, in, in Unix just says like time, uh, no, POSIX says that time is kept in time t, but it does not really mention a type for it, and Unix uses long. And the way the Unix keeps time, this time will run out uh, with the 32 bit signed number that we're using. So it's like long is 64 bits on a 64 bit architecture and 32 bits on a 32 bit machine. And 2038 is really a problem for 32 bit machines and binaries because it's only 32 bits. And so. Well, since I came to this problem a little late, like, so, like, the direction of, the direction for the program was already set. Um, so, Arndt is the overall lead, and he's the, he's the person setting, like, rules, which was, and strategies, which was really helpful, which was, so things like, oh, you, we do not want to break 64-bit machines, the 64-bit ABI. So we don't ever try to change it, like, but changing it might have been easier. And um, so again, like, why don't we do it the same way as the BSD Linux did it, but by just changing time t to use 64 bits? And this was, again, a decision made by Arndt, and this was all before I even joined the program. So yeah. It, all the credit goes to him. And so, yeah, the fix is really to uh, make the time t long, long. Long, long is always 64 bits, be it 64-bit machine or a 32-bit machine. And it has a really, really long period of time before it expires. So <laughs> I think we'll be good. And so this was the first patch that was submitted. And this was in 2014. Uh, I, and so this is when the work actually started, and it's five years in right now. 
I think Ant started like on the file system patches even before this. So it's like six years maybe. Yeah. And so since then, like there have been like many driver patches. So driver patching is like, uh, it, it is easier than the other problems because it's just like, okay, well, just one, it's only affecting one driver and then we just update it to whatever uh, time data type that we feel that is safe. And uh, the core time timekeeping code was again done like before I joined, like, and file system, yeah, this, I finished it last year and it, yeah, it's like, it's. This was the longest one, and it took like six years for us to finish it. And system calls were almost done, and Arn posted an update last week. And if that gets merged, we'll be like two system calls behind. And so this is what is involved in changing all the time T users. So update like so. So we we really try to try to make the code better. Sometimes, like, if you use monotonic time, in some cases, it's better than using real time. But it's also that it's easy for us to guess what the subsystem would want. But when we actually propose it, the maintainers actually come back to us and say, oh, we had it this way because of this. And it's not really a good thing to change. And so not always, it, it doesn't always work out, and that's why we have many revisions of patches. And so, like I said, like this was one of the first patches I posted for the driver interface, and this was a really uh, trivial change. Um, so the timekeeping for this driver, like it used to measure duration of a call, and this was just using time spec, and our goal is to get rid of all time spec and time vals. And, and then just use time 64 internally. But so it so happened that uh, Arn said, when I posted this patch, Arn said, oh, why are you, you, you're just trying to get time in seconds, but so just use uh, k time get seconds instead of k time get t64 and ts64, but it's, and then from that we went and dig, dug around more and so this simple change of four lines became like 21 files changed and we deleted the in entire driver. So, <laughs> so, so it, yeah, this, like, so, and so, so driver patches are one of, are supposed to be easier ones, but yeah, we always kept doing more revisions. And so this is the ioctal patches. So ioctals are, a, so usually you have the size of the structure encoded in the ioctal number. So whether it's, so, but this is not always the case. Some, some ioctals just have a number and that's harder to update. And, but this one, USB test ioctal did have a size parameter, but we still went ahead and changed it. Uh, to, as you can see, like we removed the USB. Hello, is the mouse? Okay, yeah. I, as you can see, there is the red one, the USB test request that we removed and added two more, and the the last one should be a plus. So, so th this is a little tricky because, so the. Original parameter to the ioctal use time well, and we we divided up that into two different structures. One for 64-bit machines. This is this is just providing backward compatibility. This is just keeping track of the duration of the test again, and there's it's not really a 2038 problem. It, there's no test that would run for that long that you would need more than 32 bits to represent time. So. But the problem with this was that the USB parameter, the ioctal interface was defined inside the kernel. It was not part of the UAPI. And that, that's why we changed the name of it to duration sec. And so the 
all the applications that use it also embed this structure, and we did not want to break them and for 64-bit machines, and that's why we gave a U6, this param 64 option. Otherwise, just the 32-bit would suffice here. And so, and then there are other interfaces which are like the read. So this read does not, um, so how do you tell, so th this is really tricky for compact code. So what do you do about applications that are running in 32-bit mode on a 64-bit machine? So read does not like tell you, uh, it, it, it does not let you pass anything extra to let you know that. Uh, you can just look at the task flags inside the kernel and say, okay, is it a compact syscall? And then do something about it. And so here we did, and we had initially proposed um, using monotonic time because uh, it's just boot time. And so you just need to know like, oh, there's an input event and oh, it happened at this time. And you just need to know the differences between when the events happen. It, there's no real need to have this in real time. Uh, yeah, but then Dimitri came back and said, no, it's like the whole, we, we would like to update the whole protocol and not just this one thing. Um, because um, so it seems like uh, so sometimes some input events uh, send more than one input message to the user. And in that case, there is no need to embed time in every single message. And so his recommendation was when we do change that part, let's go ahead and change this to monotonic time, not right now. So. What we ended up doing here was to use the unsigned bit, uh, the signed bit, and make the whole field unsigned. So this just extended the input events to last till 2106 instead of 2038. So, and we just left it to the maintainers to extend more. And that's what this is doing in Compat syscall. And yeah, this Compat U64 bit is really the X32 hackery. And so we came up with this really complex macro. So it's a time. So we do not want to break, again, the 64-bit user space. So time well stays there. And this is only for user space, which is if the kernel is not defined. Otherwise, inside the kernel, we always use input event sec and input event usec to refer to these fields. And uh, yeah, there's, there's one architecture that needed fix up after this, like I sent in a patch last week. Yeah, so the Spark, Spark 64 works differently and in that, that the U seconds is int and not really long. So yeah, we had to go ahead and, yeah, we, we didn't catch that before and Arndt was like, oh, okay, I found one architecture where uh, time val fields do not match kernel long, kernel long. So we, we have to have a if diff there. Yep. Okay, and this is, the, this is the file system part that took like six years. Yeah, uh, yeah so th this actually involves the inode times like in kernel, I know times. Uh, these are these were documented in time spec format, which is again using 32-bit time t on 32-bit machines. And here, the complexity is that that many of the file systems, individual file systems, use the VFS code. And so, if you update the VFS data structure to use time spec 64, then you have to update all of them at the same time. So it's so. How do you do it? That was the question. And well, so these are, yeah. Somebody went ahead and argued that all of so VFS actually provides a set attribute and get attribute function for the for all the file system attributes. And somebody was arguing that okay, all the modifications to time should actually go through this. And so if you just really update those, you should be good. So there's not much 
change that's needed. So I went ahead and tabulated all the different kinds of time accesses that there were in this file system. So it's like, so, so if you see that VFS time is VFS time, that's actually the correct access. And like this, apart from set attribute and that VFS time, you have about like 300 lines of change, 300 lines that need to change, 300 things that need to change. It's not just that that line needs to change. So, and so yeah, and then I, so our, our solution was to real, so Arndt posted the initial, let's, yeah, let me go here. So Arndt posted the initial series in 2014, which was, which did not involve any of which did not involve any of the in intermediate stuff. Like, so he, he just went ahead and changed everything, I think. Um, I don't remember how exactly he did. And I, I posted the initial series by putting in a macro. Um, so whenever, you ac whenever there is an access to VFS times, you go and access this macro. And the plan was to change the macro within like first change all the file systems to use these macros to access times, and then go ahead and change the data type internally, and then only this macro needs to change, and then go back and clean up all the file systems to remove this macro access and access times directly. That was the proposed uh, solution, but uh, I think, and, and also there were like um, the, there, there are also like weird um, cleanups that require, like people were using current time, which is not, re there is a current FS time, which actually, actually takes the file granularity and update, like gives you the current time for the file system. But uh, yeah, like the file system times were updated using all, that, all different kinds of uh, time macros. And so, yes, yeah, there were sometimes bugs when the granularity does not match whatever the file systems have, the time can actually go back. So it's like, so if the updates happen really quickly, and um, so if your granularity is in nanoseconds, but the function you're using to get time is using mac microseconds, then yeah, it's, so it's, so those are the kind of bugs that you can end up having. And so, so yeah, like after posting the initial patch and when, um, yeah, like uh, people said like, oh, okay, let's, oh, what, how about doing it in different ways? So, so I posted the, yeah, so this series, like when I initially posted the series, it had way too many things, like all the cleanups and this macro, and I think I wrote a cover letter which resembled a paper, so it was not really good. <laughs> And so it, so then I, I took only the piece that was, that which we were actually asking as like, I, are you okay with this macro approach? And then wrote up a series based on that. Like, but even for doing the macro, the, you could actually change the type. Like you could have an abstract type and then hide that type instead of just having a macro. And so that, yeah, that was the three ways of doing just a macro thing, and yeah, that also is like, the people were like, okay, why are you posting three things? Why are you posting a series to do the same thing in three ways? <laughs> I have other work to do, so, <laughs> yeah. So, and I think um, Thomas actually came back and said like, he actually liked one of the methods here, and so we thought like, okay, that, that was the macro thing. And we thought, okay, we would take macro and change each individual's file systems uh, and separately, but yeah, that, that comes later. And so, and then there was the current time. These are the unsafe time functions that we actually did another series for and got all this deleted and then we came to current FS time, and there was an argument about like this not being the right way of 
because this takes the super block as an argument and current time should uh, should actually be it's an inode time and not really it doesn't really have anything to do with the super block and so Linus asked for the change and so we made it another series and changed all the current time I, I think yeah so and that is the new function which replaced the current uh, current fs time with current time and then eventually we just got rid of all the macros and stuff and then said okay we'll just change all the file systems at once and then we just merged it as a flag day patch so Yeah, this was the current time series. Yeah, I don't know what's happening with my mouse. Oh wait, yeah, here. So the current time series ended up being, this cleanup series ended up being just as big as the series that we were trying to change things. So like you can see here, like, it's, it changed 156 files. It, it's actually bigger than the actual flag day patch, which, which is actually the change we needed. We didn't really want to clean up, but that was an essential step to get here. So both the patches were done using Coxinel to keep. Um, so yeah, this yeah to keep the changes simple and the, yeah, it, it was really like we need to we want to keep the changes as simple as possible so that they are. Easier, easier to review and we don't make lots of mistakes and when we change so many things at once. And so there's still one thing that's left for VFS, which is um, having the, documenting the file system minimum and max timestamps, which, yeah, I, so I have posted this series before and we haven't really gotten any feedback. So it, it's, yeah, we'll, I'll be posting this again. So, and system calls are, are one of the hardest part of what we were solving. And so, and this is one of the harder sys calls because as you can see, it, there is a time spec argument and there is also other arguments that are that have different sizes for 32-bit machines versus the 64-bit machines. So, usually it's like if you just have the time spec argument, you would get rid of you will yeah you would. It would be easier to get rid of the compact mode because you would want to use the same entry point for 64-bit machines and 32-bit machines, we want to use the same layout. But in this case, we cannot get rid of the compact. So, so as you can see, like 64-bit has the same entry, has the same entry point, but, but the time spec argument is what, what makes them different between 32-bit and 64-bit machines. In this case, more than time spec. And then you have a compact sys p select this is again, this uses, 30, this is, uh, this time spec will be the same as sys p select time spec. And so how we fixed it was by adding a new, new compact sys call, which is a time 64 based entry point for p select on 64 bit machines. And, and, and making the sys p select uh, six same as the one on 64-bit machines, on 32-bit machines, and then providing a backward compatibility because we cannot break what already exists by providing by providing the time 32 by th providing the time 32 entry for this is called. So, so this is the method basically. Like we change the normal syscall to use the same. 64-bit time t layout as the as on 64-bit machines, and then we reuse compact syscalls if there are no other compact types, but not in this case, and then we re 
yeah, then we rename compare time t because it does not make sense anymore. Like with the new time t, it's the same layout for 64-bit machines and 32-bit machines, so there is no really compact. So it's all, so we just called it old time, time 32T. And the old compact syscall will be called time, is updated to sysfoo time 32. And the sysfoo time 32 is called compact time 64. This is in the case of when there is more than one compared argument. So, and as you can see, we try to limit all the 32-bit compatibility functions under config compared 32-bit time. So if an architecture is compiled with this, you get all the older unsafe 32-bit time functions. But if you compile it without this, then all the syscalls that are exposed or and features that are exposed are going to be like 32 bit, 2038 safe. And so in the end, you end up with, on a 32-bit machine, you have like two entry points, um, p select 6 and p select 6 time 32. And on 64-bit machines, you have three entry points. So, and the way we try to, and the way we try to do this in a sane way is like by defining, by controlling when the time spec is changed for each architecture. So each architecture has to go and hook up the syscalls in their syscall table and then say, okay, I am ready to turn on the config 64 bit time config. Until then, we just keep using the old time spec definition. So this, le this allowed us to go change one architecture at a time and not really having to change all architectures at once. And so Arndt's patch, like two weeks back, also proposes of getting rid of this. We are already there. Yeah, it's not been merged yet. And so this is again a part of cleanup. So this, this again was like, so what happens with all the P syscalls is that you set uh, the SIG mask for a process and then try to do something. And this, all of these did it in a different way. And so we ended up cleaning up that part uh, by refactoring it to common functions like one function to set the SIG mask and one function to read it, uh, I mean unset it while returning. So this, this looks like a simple change, but it took a while to figure out how the SIG mask affects the process and uh, like if, so it's like if you see this part, like if return equals e restart no hand, this means like, okay, so if the pr user space process has not registered a signal handler, then you get here. And if someone, if the internal functions have already returned, um, if, if they've already checked for a signal pending, then they return this e restart hand, no hand. So there, there are like lots of things that are dependent on refactoring this, so it took us a while. And yeah, th this is how we just, I just ended up learning too many things. <laughs> yeah, so, and so these are the syscalls that we do not have, um, we, we do not have a safe time 64 conversions for. Uh, so the, op uh, the plan here is that glibc will try to call this internally. Like when you call nano sleep, they try to take that and then call clock get time instead. Because that has a 64-bit replacement. And
This was, and this was again like one of the harder things. This, so here like the socket options. So you, you can have options on a socket and there are time stamping options. So you can say like I want, um, I want the packets, the receive, the received packets to be time stamped. And so how this works is like you make a set sock opt call and turn on the option on the socket. And then when you actually receive the messages to re through receive message, the timestamp is sent through a control message. It's an out of band message. And so like how, so th th as you can see, like it cannot be handled the same way as sys calls because the, the place where you're setting that you need a different kind of uh, timestamp is different from where you're reading it. So, so how do you do this? So the option is to have new 2038 safe socket options, which will always return 64-bit timestamps or have like, if you see this receive message, it has flags. So you can use the flags to indicate that you want 64-bit times. And so we never got a preference. So we just went with the adding new timestamps one because that was more straightforward. And again, we, and for, again, we did more cleanup here because uh, this is generic asm generic socket dot file socket dot h file and each architecture has its own and sometimes these two were like really the same and so we deleted a few like four architectures and there was more opportunity for cleanup here because so each um, each user timestamp is translated to an internal socket flag and so this sock underscore flags are in, in, in kernel socket flags. And so as you can see, the SO timestamp NS flags actually are also turning on SO timestamp flags. So every time you have to check for SO timestamp NS, whether that option is set on a socket, you also have to go check on SO timestamp. So Every time you have to check on, as if every time you want to check whether SO timestamp is on on a socket, you have to make sure that SO timestamp NS is not set on that socket. But these two flags are in no way related. So we, yeah. So we, I did, the, I did propose like deentangling those two flags, but maintainers came back and said, no, this code is really fragile to a performance. Uh, runs so it's like let's not touch anything to do with reading or writing of this socket flag so we dropped it and so and but there's also another yeah this this another tricky part here if you see this size the way we have defined the new SO timestamp option it actually compares the size of time t to kernel long t this was done because um, so uh, you, you, people can include uh, socket.h after time.h or it can be the other way around. We want time.h to be included before socket.h and that's why. And this one will make sure that you catch it during compile time if you do it this way. And so these are the time structures. So th this is the glibc internal time structure, like how time spec 64 will look internally for glibc. So, so we wanted to map the 32-bit structure to be the same as the one on 64-bit structure. So we have, so and it's different. So we try to put we try to put the bits in the same place as on a 64-bit machine. 
because of the long. The long uh, for TV NSEC is defined by POSIX, and we didn't want to deviate from POSIX. So we kept it that way. But now, if you do a static initialization on a big Indian machine, you end up having to, you, you need to have an anonymous structure, otherwise you're initializing the wrong field. And on a little Indian, you can have the padding at the end. That's OK. And we have to take care that we do clear out this padding before we copy the structure back to user space. And yeah, this, this is the current time value structure, which, which will again look like this because of Spark being int. So we need the padding for Spark because uh, TV USEC is in. And so this way, this kernel old time valve matches the kernel time valve on 64-bit machines. And the glibc porting, I, yeah, so we, the glibc part, we decided that, uh, no, I, I didn't decide it, but it was already decided before I joined that we would be using a compile time switch, which is this use time bit 64. So if the user, if the user application decided to use 64 bit time t, then it's compiled with this a macro, and then, and then glibc sees that the user has defined this flag, and it, it exposes use time bits 64, and that's how they know which time t to use. Mm -hmm. This muzzle is not doing a compile time switch. They are just going to have a new version of the library, most probably. And like all the distros need to be rebuilt because of adding the new syscalls and building the new applications with the safe flag. And, and, and there are still more 32-bit interfaces that we need to fix. Like uh, on this timestamps for a few file systems like XFS and they still don't use more than 32 bits. And this is on disk timestamps. We just fix the in, in memory timestamps. And so they need to have a fix somehow. And this is just more like some real time clocks do not support time like uh, there, there are time till 2038. I do not know what the plan is there. So, yeah, so this is just what's remaining. So uh, here, the, here the big series has already been posted and VDSO is, uh, yeah, that, that would be the biggest rewrite. So the plan there is that um, Many architectures try to expose the same functions as part of VDSO, but it's just like, they're just a copy paste right now. And not all architectures need more than get time of day and get clock, uh, clock get time. So the option is to provide, uh, maybe providing a generic implementation that the uh, the, the architectures have an option of using. That's the plan there. Uh, it will take a few versions, and we'll see how that goes. Yeah. And like here, this is like some file system uh, work is remaining, but it's like some of them are really, some of them are big, like the XFS I mentioned, but like uh, relative A time need update. Yeah, it's. It's really simple. It's just a part left over from the flag patch that we didn't clean up yet. And these drivers should be simple. And the core, th these are all cleanups. We want to remove all the time val and time spec 
and time t from the internal kernel usage so that we have a better chance at verifying that the kernel is 2038 safe when we are done. And that is it's, it's, uh, it's just more clean up. And yeah, questions? Oh, yeah, so yeah, just ask. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there is. Right. The. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, the question is like, well, we have used like many old and new names in the data type, and is that going to be final? So old, it makes we already have many things that are called old, like stat has many stat old stat and. So it, we were just following the convention, and so the time value is going to yeah, time value is going to die. So that's like old time values. Don't use it. And new, yeah, we, we tried experimenting with 64 bit. It, there's no real good name. We would we would be happy to take suggestions. But it's like if you look at um, all the new calls that we're using, um, it's not really good to call them 64 bit because the other one was also 64-bit on 64-bit architectures. It's just a misnomer. <laughs> so uh, there's no good name. So yeah, if we're ready, we're happy to take suggestions. Feel free to and yeah, email us and let us know. Okay. And the course of that, you actually mentioned on the slide, which is the U10, the format of the U10 structure. It's basically a pre print in that file. And that structure has the user name of the characters, but it also has the code from the time. So my thought was uh, when doing this transition to time, it would be a great time to get this other change in. Okay. To change the size of the user name. So my question is as someone's got a code, how would I know when the right time to try and piggyback on that process is? I don't know, we have a 2038 mailing list if you want to keep an eye out for stuff like that. Or you can email me if you have anything specific or aren't. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is just for 2038, but you can also look at like LKML, I guess. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.